Hi, and welcome back to C Programming Skills using Replit. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's get started. So here we're going to look at standard I.O., uh, look at some of the input functions. So I'll start here on our project, just like we've been doing the standard Hello World project. Uh, what I'm going to do for this one, I'll say, uh, well, we'll do Hello World, then we'll say printf press enter to continue. We did this in an earlier video. We'll do it here again. And uh, what we used was get. And notice when I type get, in fact, you see as I'm typing, we see different functions that are coming up. And the one we're interested in right now is get char. So notice we've got a get char. And I want you to notice get char stands for get character. And it returns an integer. So one way I could use this is just call get char and not worry about what comes back. And after it comes back, let's use our, we'll do our put string since we know about it. We'll say all done. All right, we know the put string. You don't have to put the new line character. So if I run this, it says press enter to continue. And I press the enter key and it says all done. Now we also know if I run that and I press, say, A, B, C, D, it's not until you press the enter or return key that it continues on. So this is an example of what's called buffered input. As you type this in, it puts it into what's called a buffer. Think of it as a box that holds characters. And it keeps putting things in that box until you press the enter key or the return key. But we see it also return something to us. We saw it returns an int. So if I said int, oh, let's just call it C, we declare a box called C. Maybe we'll call it CH for character. So we could actually put the character we get into C and we could print that out. So if we could say printf, uh, so we'll say CH percent D backslash N and print the value of C. So this is going to be a decimal value, right? Integer coming back. And in fact, if I run this and I just press the enter key, we see it has the value of 10. 10 happens to be the value of backslash n, that is new line character. If I run this again, though, and let's say I press the letter A and press enter, we see 97 happens to represent the letter A. And that's a review. We saw that earlier in the course, but this is a good place to get started. Um, I want you to notice, too, we could also, an alternative way of doing this, you don't see it quite as often, but let's, let's mention it. Notice as I type get, we see all these different choices, and the one at the top says get C with a file pointer to a string. Huh. File pointer to a string. Well, remember in the previous video, we talked about something called standard output and standard error. Well, there's also something called standard in. That is standard input. And so if we uh, read from standard input, in fact, let me say printf, reading from standard in, and we will get that character. And then let's say printf. The character we read, backslash n, is a ch. So basically what I'm doing here, this, it turns out, is a shorthand for this. And you'll see many times when you have functions, you'll have kind of the simplified version of the function and the more detailed version of the function. And we're seeing that here. You don't see this one used as often. This is the one you typically see, but it turns out you could do this and say, I'm reading from what's called standard input. So let's run this. If I just press the enter key, notice it reads that enter key, which is a 10, and then it says reading from standard in. So it's basically, once again, waiting for me to enter something. I'll press the enter key. So no surprise there. By pressing return or enter, it does that new line character. But suppose I do this, suppose I say A, B, C, D, and I press enter. We see that 
the A is 97, right? A is 97. Well, if A is 97, you can guess that B is 98. And indeed, that's the case. We've got A is 97, B is 98. Of course, if I did two more of these, I could also get C and D if I needed that. Okay, so that's how we can get a single character. Now let's suppose we want to get, instead of a single character, we want to get A, B, C, D. We want to get them all at once. So let's do another one here. Let's say, um, in fact, what I'll do just for the sake of demonstration, let's say I'm going to press slash star, and then I come down here and say star slash. Notice how I commented out that code. So I, I literally commented it out. In fact, let me even do it like this. Suppose I want to comment out this whole block. So slash star says begin the comment, and star slash says end the comment. I've, I've commented out this whole code, and what that means now when I click on run, notice we just see hello world, and we see all done. So what I might do just for demo purposes and say this was our first demo. Right, we, we showed that, and that was good. But let's do another demo down here. And for this one, I'm going to say let's do a let's do something called get s, which is get string. So if I say get s, notice if I say get uh, s, and I'm just going to leave it like that. In fact, let me say printf enter a string. Let's see, I don't see this one come up. So implicit declaration of function get s is invalid in C99. So this get string is not valid based on what we're seeing here. Now, when I was making this video, I started to ignore this get s because uh, it was actually in a textbook that I was looking at, and they had this get s example. And here I am typing it in, and we're seeing that the little green curly line says you've got a, a warning, right? The green line says you got a warning. And when I put my cursor, it says implicit declaration. Implicit declaration. Well, what that means is the system... Oops, let me go ahead and click that. You'll see that message pop up sometimes, but no big deal. Um, we've got this, and if I click on Run, notice, again, we get this warning, implicit declaration, and we're on line 18. And not only that, not only was that an implicit declaration, but it says warning the get string function is dangerous and should not be used. Okay, so the reason I wanted to show you this demonstration is sometimes when you're looking in textbooks and you may see a function that maybe at one time it was useful and good, but over time it's no longer. And in fact, this gives a pretty good one. It says get string function is dangerous and should not be used. Now, why is it dangerous? Well, it turns out, without going in a lot of detail, this was one of the functions that made it easy to do what's called buffer overrun. So you could literally overrun the buffer. And people that like to uh, break into programs right, and, and figure out how to get into them, this was a pretty bad opening. So I'm going to say, note, do not use. So do not use. In fact, I'm going to comment this, both of these out right now. Okay? But let's use one that you, you do use quite often. And this one, let's suppose we wanted to uh, run our program. And um, suppose we wanted to do this. Printf, enter a integer. So enter an integer. Integer number. And we wanted somebody to enter 
an integer number. Well, we know from previous videos you need to have a box. I'll just call it number. And in this case, this box called number is going to hold an integer. So what we need to do is make it where when we give this prompt, we allow someone to enter this number. Here's how we can do that. We can say scan f. And notice when I type scan f, this pops up and it says give a constant character string formatted. And again, this is kind of scary. We haven't talked about this too much, but just bear with me. The point is we're going to put some type of formatting string there, followed by, notice the comma, dot, 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 followed by something. So what I'm going to put is percent %d. Percent %d, we know, is for a decimal, comma. And this is where it's a little confusing. I'm going to say the ampersand um, uh, number. Huh. Now, what this is saying is scan in a decimal, an a, a integer number, and where I want you to put it, this is a pointer. This syntax that says I'm pointing to where I want you to put it. Now, if you do it like this, notice we get a warning. And I highly encourage you to take advantage of these warnings. Notice if I position my cursor, it says format specifies type int star. Now when you see int star, you should read that as saying int pointer. Think of using your hand to point to something. It says you're expecting to point to something, but the argument is of type int. In other words, this number is of type integer. Well, what we need is a pointer to it. Think of using your finger. You want to point to it. Well, the way we represent that is like this. So now your finger, think of your finger as pointing to this. Now, to confirm that we read it in, let's do a printf, and we'll say number percent %d backslash n. Let's print out the number. Now, notice here we don't have to point to it. It literally will get this box and put the contents right here because this is for output. But for input, we need to tell scanf point to where you want me to read this in. So let's do that. Let's come over here. Let's click on Run. It says Enter a number. Let's well, suppose I enter 42. And I press Enter. Woo! Look at that. The number is 42. Let me run it again. Number one, two, three. Press enter. All right, we read in the number one, two, three. So this is a way we can scan in a particular number. We could even do this. We could have uh, let's have a character. Let's have something called a ch for a character, and uh, let's say how about scan f percent c which is a character and we'll point to the character point to the character now notice as i type this in we see the little green curly line i come here and it says format specifies type character pointer but the argument is an integer pointer uh oh well, let, well let's let's make them the same now this is something we haven't seen there's actually a data type called char. So this box can hold what's called a char. This box can hold an integer. Just two different things. A char is a single character. A number can be right an integer a number. So here we'll say printf enter a single we'll say enter a single character. And then to prove that we've read in the character, we'll say printf ch is percent %c, right, for character, and we will put ch. All right, let's run it. 
Enter a number, 42. Oh, <laughs> uh, enter a single character. Wow. Uh, let me, let me, uh, ooh, subtle point here. Let me print it out. Let's print out the character as a decimal value. And let's print it out as a character value. Print it out as a decimal value, print it out as a character value. Watch what happened. So when I set enter a number, I type 42. And remember, I now press the enter key. Boom. Well, when I press the enter key, it turns out it reads in the 42, but behind the 42 is an enter key, the return key. And notice it said you've got a CH10. And here, when it prints it out, sure enough, we get a new line character right there. Let me do that again. Suppose I say 42 space A, and now I press Enter. Now we see we've got the 42, and then when it reads in the character, it reads in the character. It said the character was, was 32. Uh, even that's not quite right. Uh, interesting. Um, it turns out it's reading in the space. The space is actually uh, has the value of 32. So it, it read in the integer 42, and the very next thing it read in was a space. Just to prove that to you, let's do this. We'll read in the character once, and let's read in the character again. Let's do scan f percent c the character, and let's print it out again. So watch this. All right, let's run it. Okay, we'll say in our number forty-two space. Oh, let me say a. Enter. Well, we see, of course, we got the 42. We see that 32 happens to be this space. And we know from previous demos, previous videos, that A is 97. And indeed, we got 97. So I realize this is a little confusing, but play with this a little bit. The point is, you're reading in, in this case, a number. The, the scan F says read in a number. And then... Uh, just for demonstration purposes, we scanned F a character, where you literally scan a single character, like we saw here. Uh, sometimes people ask, could you do this? This will be our grand finale for this demo. Could I have an integer, num1, in fact, let me do it like this. We just finished up this demo, and that was pretty good. So I'll comment this out. All right, this is a nice technique. You've, you've kind of finished one demo, so you can comment that out. Let's do this. We'll say print f, enter num1 and num2. And what we'll do is have an integer, num1, and an integer, num2. So two different boxes, and let's put an integer sum. So num1, num2, and sum. And let's do scan F. How about scan a percent D and another percent D? Now remember we have to point to them, so pointer to num1, pointer to num2, and then let's say the sum is going to equal to num1 plus num2, and then we'll say print F Let's show the sum, percent D, sum. All right, it's our grand finale. Let's give it a run. Enter number, okay, I'll say 10 and 20. I press enter. Hey, 10 and 20 is 30. So in summary, in this video, we saw using the printf, uh, the scanf to scan things in. We also saw the get char. Uh, earlier to read in a single char. And we saw a real good demo of sometimes you will you may see things in a book or online 
that you think you can use but when you try to use it in our case we tried to use this get string and we saw that we got a warning saying unsafe do not use it all right thank you for making it this far and more to come in the next video i'm norman mcintyre thanks as always for watching